Hey everyone, welcome to Velocity Online. We hope you're having a great morning this morning or great afternoon or evening if you're watching a little bit later in the day. If you were here in person, you would have gotten at least three hugs and been greeted by a bunch of people by now, but we know that some of you live out of town or you're traveling or you just can't make it in person. So we're so thankful that you're able to join us online. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, make sure you say hi in the comments or let us know of any prayer requests you have. We love to pray for people throughout the week, so please let us know what's going on in your life. At Velocity, our mission is to ignite the faith that fuels your life to impact the world. So right now we're gonna jump into a time of worship to get our hearts focused on God, and then we'll dive into today's message. So thanks again for joining us. Come on, let's go. ever stopped you Friday 
Friday's disappointment Your Sunday's empty too Since when has impossible ever stopped you? This is the sound of dry bones rattling this is the praise, make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out, I'm gonna live, gonna live again. And this is the sound of dry bones rattling. Pentecostal fire. Stirring something new You're not gonna run out of miracles anytime soon And resurrection power It runs in my veins too I believe there's another miracle here in this room This is the sound of dry bones rattling this is the place, make the dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. Our God is able to deliver us, amen. Sing this to him this morning. My God is able to save and deliver and heal and restore anything that he wants to. Just ask the man and his throne on the bones of Elijah. There's any Thing that he can do Just cast the stone that was rolled At the tomb in the garden What happens when God says to move I feel him moving it now I feel him doing it now I feel him doing it now Doing now, doing now the sound of dry bones rattling And this is the place Make the dead man walk again Open the grave I'm coming out I'm gonna live, gonna live again Open the grave I'm coming out I'm gonna live, gonna live again Open the grave I'm coming out I'm gonna live, gonna live and this is the sound of dry bones rattling Amen. Thank you. Take a moment to say hello to someone around you. Persevere through, push through, overcome to be where you're at right now. I want you to be you, but I want you to be the best version of you you can possibly be. That's all I ask. That's all I demand. I love you. I'm proud of you. Let's go, Rose Bowl. Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> Good. Good. Hey, it's good to see you. Thanks so much for being here this morning. Uh, listen, if this is your first time here at Velocity, I want to welcome you. Uh, when you come in, right on your right on the row there, there should be something called a Connect card. Do us a favor, fill that out and drop it in the black box in the back of the room. The reason we ask you to do that is because we want to get to know you as well as you kind of want to get to know like what's happening here at Velocity. So if you have that, just go ahead and fill that out and drop it in the back. And I actually want to start off this morning by uh, giving everyone a huge thank you for the amazing display of generosity that you showed last week. For those of you who couldn't be here last weekend, last Sunday morning, we did our commitment uh, weekend for the Wreck the Roof program that we've been talking about for the past several weeks. And it was unbelievable because we really wanted to step in and help 37 little girls who'd been rescued from being sold into sex slavery. And folks, I am so happy to tell you that your generosity was unbelievable because last week you pledged to give $447,364. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I seriously, I can't thank you enough for looking at a situation that was really, really bad and stepping in and just being a part of that. Now, real quick, for the 50 or 60 or 70 people who called me, texted me, or emailed me on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday to ask me, Scott, how do I start giving to this? All you have to do is go to our website at velocitycleveland.org. Then you're going to click on the Give tab, which is right there above. As soon as you click on that Give tab, you're going to see a thing right on the home front of the page that says, Wreck the Roof. Just click that button and you can give there. Or you can write a check, put it in the black box in the back of the room. But do me a favor. Please hear my heart on this. If you do write a check, please write Wreck the Roof in the memo line so that our CPA knows where to designate those funds. But folks, thank you so much. Thank you so much. It was an amazing display of generosity that you showed last week. It was unbelievable. So let's just kick this into gear. Let's raise the resources, build these homes, and let's celebrate all that God's going to do in Leonard, Winnie, the lives of these children, and what he's going to do here at Velocity. Seriously, it's super fun. So thank you guys for being awesome. Yep. All right. All right. Well, uh, t- today, we're actually kicking off a brand new series, sermon series that we call D1. But in order for this series to make sense, I need to do something that I never thought I would do. In fact, of all the stuff that I thought I would have to do as a pastor, I never dreamed in a million years that I would have to do what I have to do this morning. But in order for this entire series to make sense, I need to take all of you to on a trip to a place you never thought you would have to go. I need to take everybody on a trip to seminary. Now, for those of you who don't know what seminary is, seminary is the place where people like me have to go to be trained to be a pastor. And for those of you who are thinking that seminary is probably this really prestigious environment that's filled with stained glass buildings, right? (laughs) And what they do is is they, they hire theologians to dispense all kinds of spiritual knowledge to the students under their care. That is not what it's like at all, okay? To understand what seminary is really like, what I need you to do is I need you to think of the most dreadful experience you've ever had, okay? I mean, the worst thing ever. I want you to think about things like getting a root canal with no Novocaine, okay? Or, or think about how it would feel to be stung by a jellyfish every day of your life for five years straight. Okay, you got that picture in your mind? Okay, everybody got it? Okay, now, multiply that feeling by 112, And now you'll understand what seminary is like, because that's what it really is. Because it's day in and day out of learning how to parse Greek verbs, and you have to memorize huge parts of the Torah, but you also have to understand every ecclesiastical function known to man. And today, everybody gets to go there. It's going to be so much fun. Yeah, and I know what some of you are thinking, because some of you are like, I should have slept in. Uh, this, is, this is not going to be fun. But listen, as, as much as I joke about having to go to seminary and learning the difference between hermeneutics and homiletics, there are a lot of things in Scripture that you just can't understand in the English language until somebody actually explains 
how to understand the text in the original format. Because the original New Testament was written in Greek and it was translated into English many years later. And when you read the Bible in English, there are going to be times, not all the time, but there are going to be times when you miss the power of what was really written. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Whenever you're reading the text and you see the word enthusiasm, what we think as Americans, we think it's referring to someone who has a lot of zest or zeal for life, somebody who seizes every opportunity. But our English word enthusiasm is actually transliterated from two Greek words. It comes from the Greek words en, meaning full of, and the word theos, which means God. So when you take the word en and theos and you put those two words together, you get the Greek word entheos, which means the God within. So when somebody is said to have enthusiasm or be enthusiastic, what that really means is that the Spirit of God is evident in that person. It's clearly seen. You can see the fruit of the Spirit within their life. But the true message of what that really means gets lost in translation. Let me give you another example. Whenever you read the words salvation and sanctification, two words that are scattered all throughout the New Testament, some American believers will use those two words interchangeably. Because you hear people say, well, I'm saved. I'm sanctified by what Jesus did on the cross. The problem is, those two words do not mean the same thing. You see, the Greek word for the word salvation is the word soteria. And the word soteria means to save, to rescue. But the word sanctification is the word hagiosmos. And the word hagiosmos means the process of becoming holy. Now, as you can see for yourself, those two words do not mean the same thing. Salvation takes place the moment that we believe that Jesus is God's son and we confess him as Lord of our life. At that moment, we are soteria. We are saved from the consequences of sin. But hagiosmos is something completely different because sanctification is the lifelong process of being made holy by becoming more like Jesus every day. So, soteria, the act of being saved, is something you do once. But hagiosmos, becoming more like Jesus, is a lifelong process. And now you know what I did for five years of my life. Isn't that amazing? You're like, oh my gosh, I want to sign up for seminary. This is unbelievable, right? But I need to give you one more example. Because this is the one. This is the one that's going to bring the entire series into perspective. Whenever you're reading the Bible and you come across the word devoted, the term that's actually used in the Greek New Testament is the term proskiterio. And the word proskiterio is actually a conjunction of two other words. Everybody remember what a conjunction is? right? Conjunction, junction, what's your function? And what does it do? It hooks up words and phrases and clauses, right? Come on, you guys might watch TV as kids, right? Right? But... The word proskiterio is a conjunction of two words. It's a conjunction of the words pros, which means going toward, and the word kiterio, which means to be strong. So when you take the words pros and the word kiterio and you put them together, you get the term proskiterio, which means to go toward something with strong effort despite the difficulty. It means that you're going to go towards something with everything. So proskiterio means, look, this, what you're about to do, this is not easy. This is not simple. This requires devotion. But no matter how challenging this may be, I'm going to continue to go toward that goal with everything inside of me. Now, here's why I wanted you to learn the importance of that one word. It's because when we read about the men and women who were a part of the early church, the word that describes them, out of all of the words in the Greek New Testament, the word that describes them is the term proskiterio. They were completely committed to walking toward a goal with 
everything inside of them. So the question we have to ask is, well, what was that goal? What was it they were walking toward with everything inside of them? Because they were already soteria. They'd already been saved. They already had entheos. They had the spirit of God within. So what was it that they were walking toward? Why were they known as being people who were proskiterio? Well, in Acts chapter 2, we learn what it is that they were walking toward. But before I read this verse, I want to explain something really important. We touched on a very small section of this verse in another series that we did several months ago. So before I read this, don't snap in your mind and go, oh, I know what that means. No. This is one of the most important verses that you will ever learn in the Greek New Testament. It's so imperative for you to understand how powerful this is that we're going to take the next several weeks unpacking it. But I want you to see what that verse actually says. Acts chapter 2, verse, verse, verse 42 says this. It says, they devoted themselves. They proskiterioed. And what did they proskiterio toward? The apostles' teaching. To the fellowship. To the breaking of bread. And to prayer. So scripture tells us that these early believers committed themselves. They proskiterioed themselves to four basic things. They were completely dedicated to learning everything that Jesus ever taught. They were devoted to one another. They never overlooked the importance of communion, and they spent an enormous amount of time in prayer, which begs the question, why were they proscatario to those four things? Of all of the stuff this early church could have done, Why did they walk toward those four goals with everything inside of them? Well, the answer is, they walk forward toward those four things because that's what Jesus wanted his followers to do. Listen to how Jesus explains this in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Jesus said, therefore, it means as a result of, therefore, Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rains came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. And that verse is unbelievable. Because in this section of scripture, Jesus is saying, okay, here's what's going to happen. There are basically going to be two groups of people in life. One of those groups are going to be made up of the men and the women who've heard all of the things that I've taught, all of the things that I've said, and they'll take all of that wisdom and they'll actually do it. They won't just show up onto a building on Sunday morning to perform a bunch of religious rituals. These people are going to be different. They're going to be proscatario. Because they're going to take all that I've taught about money, faith, relationships, forgiveness. They're going to take all of that wisdom and they're going to put it into practice by doing it. And they're going to walk toward those goals no matter how challenging it may be. And the fascinating part of Jesus' words is they're true. Because all of us know somebody who lives their life that way. Because all of us know somebody who lives their life in such a way that we look at them and go, how do they do that? Why is it they seem like they're never distracted? Why are they always going this direction? Why is it no matter where they are or who they're with, they just seem to make great things happen? How is it that they could have this dreaded disease that's taking their life and their faith in their God isn't shattered? Why is their marriage so amazing? Well, the answer is simple. It's because they're a group of people who not only heard the words of Jesus... They took those words and they proskiterioed. They put them into practice by walking toward it, no matter how challenging it might be. 
But then Jesus goes on to define another group of people. Look at what he says in verse 26. He said, but everyone who hears these words of mine that does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rains came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Now, this is fascinating. Because in this next section of scripture, Jesus talks about another group of people, and he wasn't being mean, he wasn't being judgmental, he was being honest. Because Jesus said, look, there are going to be all kinds of men and women who've heard the things that I've said. They know what I say about sex, morality, friendships, forgiveness, hope, prayer. They're going to know all the lessons that I've taught, but for some reason... They're never going to take that wisdom and put it into practice. I mean, they'll go to church for years. They'll sing the songs. They've heard the sermons. They can probably each even quote some verses from the Bible. But the spiritual lessons they know in their head have never been transferred to their heart and to their actions. And we know that Jesus wasn't being mean because we all know people like that. Because some of us are people or know people or are related to people who know what Jesus teaches about certain areas of life, but for some reason, they never proskiterio. They never really walk toward it with everything inside of them. And then they wonder, why isn't my life going the way I want it to go? Well, the answer is simple. It's because we've heard those words We've just never taken Jesus' words and put them into practice. I mean, take prayer, for example. We all know what the Bible teaches about prayer because Scripture tells us that the prayer of the righteous man or righteous woman is powerful and effective. But for some reason, it is so difficult for us to slow down long enough to actually take our concerns up to the Father. And then we'll wonder, I just feel like God... Why God isn't working in my life? I don't know why I feel this way, but I feel like God's kind of absent. Why do I feel that way? Well, the answer is simplistic. We've heard what Jesus said about prayer. We've just never taken his words and put them into practice. We really never got that chance to proskiterio because we never saw the other side. We never saw the benefit. Or think about what Jesus said about forgiveness. Because we know what he taught. Like, look, if you're holding this against them, you need to tie up your sacrifice. You need to go and make it right so you can come back. And your relationship with me, the Father, is going to be so much better. But what happens to a lot of people is they find themselves holding on to all of the anger they feel inside. They think about what he said or what she did. They'll even replay the scenario in their mind over and over. But then they'll ask themselves, why can't I get over this? Why does this situation still have so much control in my heart and my life? Well, the reason is simple. The reason we feel that way is because we've heard what Jesus said about forgiveness. We've just never taken his words and put them into practice. And the reason the early believers were so devoted to those four things is because they knew that Jesus wanted his followers to be men and women who took all of the things that he taught and actually put them into practice. Because Jesus doesn't just want us to be soteria. He doesn't just want us to be saved. He doesn't want us to just be baptized. And he doesn't just want us to have a bunch of religious entheos, a bunch of enthusiasm. We have been called to be Hagiosmos. Jesus wants us to be part of a lifelong process of becoming holy by being more like him. And the only way we can become more like Jesus is to proskiterio. We take his words, we put them into practice, and we walk toward that goal with everything inside of us. That's why Ephesians 5.1 says this. Therefore, as God's dearly loved children, imitate his holiness. How do you imitate somebody? You do exactly what they did. It says, imitate his holiness by walking in love, just as Christ loved us and sacrificed himself for us. 
And over the next several weeks, we're going to unpack what it looks like to really walk after and model the life of Jesus in those four areas. What does it look like for you and me to say, you know what? I am completely devoted. I'm proscatario. I'm going to walk towards those four things with everything inside of me. And I'm going to tell you this. This is going to be one of the most fun series we have ever done at Velocity Church. In fact, next week, next week, somebody is going to be here with us. And this person has a story of what he did to take the words of Jesus and put them into practice. What he did to walk towards something, to actually be proscatario. And when you hear what this man has done, not just in his own life, but what he's done for people around the world, you're going to be shocked. Because it is one of the most amazing stories you'll ever hear. And I hope you'll be here every week as we walk through this entire series that we called D1. Let me pray for us. God, first off, thank you that you didn't, make, you didn't make this hard to understand. Because there's nothing that's overly challenging about, hey, this is what I told you to do, go ahead and do that. You need to take the things that I said, and you need to kind of walk in that direction with everything inside of you. And you don't want that because you're kind of control us. You want that for us because you know what's going to ultimately lead us to the best place, the place that we really always wanted to be. And it's, it's that simple. Because Jesus said, I came that you'd have life and have it abundantly. And what do you want for us? You want an abundant life. But what's our response to that? What do we need to do? We need to proscatario. We need to walk toward these things that you told us to do with everything that we have inside of us. And why? Because when we do, we will find the life that we've been looking for. So God, thank you for the chance we got to be here and talk about this this morning. We want to show how much we love you. We thank you for Jesus. His name we pray. Amen. Let's stand. Sing together. Oh,
you, devoting our lives to you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. If you would, take out the communion uh, that you received on your way in the door. And uh, before you take it, you can go ahead and uh, get it ready. But, you know, these... Uh, these are pretty ordinary things, right? It's just crackers and some juice. And on the very last night that Jesus would spend on this earth with his disciples as a free man, just before he would be arrested, he took these simple elements of common items. And he took these common items just like you and I are just common in comparison to him. And he blessed them and said, take these and do this in remembrance of me. This is my body that is broken for you. This is my blood that is shed for you. That is our devotion to him because he made that sacrifice for us. So go ahead and Exhausted, you will be my strength when my mind says. Stopping what you have started until it is complete. When my mind says I'm not good enough, not your enough for me, yeah. I've decided I'm not giving up. You won't give up on me, you won't give up. 
Have a seat for just a moment. All right. We got a few announcements here this morning. Um, our women's retreat is next weekend. Woo! Yes. So um, registration closes today. So if you're going to plan on coming to this thing, today is the day. Today is the last day uh, to sign up for the ladies' retreat. It's velocitycleveland.org slash women's retreat. Um, and you will find both of the... Uh, both of the links that you need to fill out right there on that. Also, we need a handful of guys to come um, help serve that night. So if you are willing to come and help, um, just to kind of like clean up the dinner after the ladies, just so we can get back to our like main sessions and things like that. Um, Scott's going to be there. So if you want to talk to Scott about that, we'll give you some more details. Um, but we need, we need some hands with that. So we would love for you to jump in and help us do that. So uh, any guys willing to help us with that, come and talk to myself or Scott after the service today. Um, also, Smash's fall retreat is coming up the following weekend, uh, October 20th through the 22nd. Lots of super great stuff planned for that. Uh, if your student hasn't signed up for that, go ahead and get that signed up, velocitycleveland.org slash fall retreat. All kinds of retreats going on. Um, and then coming up on the following weekend, Saturday, October 28th from 4 to 6 here in the parking lot is our super fun trunk or treat um, event that we do. So if you do not have littles and you are willing to decorate your car uh, for that event, so they have lots of trunks to trick or treat in, uh, do us a favor, jot your name down out in the lobby uh, just so we can kind of get an idea of how many cars we have, how many cars we need, all that kind of stuff. Uh, they're going to create a Facebook event. So if you are on Facebook, we would love for you to uh, share that post just so we can kind of get the word out um, have lots of littles come and have fun at our little trunk or treat. Um, also, one really cool thing that we have downstairs now, because you know here at Velocity, children matter. Children matter very much, uh, but we also care deeply about your Sunday morning experience as well. And we know there's always a time when you're trying to transition a child to the Kid City area, and we know it's a struggle. So we have taken one of the rooms downstairs, and we have created a space for you to go with your child. If they're having a hard time and they're not going to their classroom, there's a room down there where you can take your child, and the service is streamed down there so you can still watch the service as it's happening. Uh, there's communion down there so when that part of the service comes up you can be a part of communion um, and then when you're ready to transition your child to their classroom the team will be there ready to help you do that. So that room is down there. It is ready to go rock and roll so if you're ever having a morning uh, with your littles and they're struggling we've created that space for you so we hope you'll take advantage of that. Um, also um, if you are aware of what is happening in the world and what happened yesterday concerning Israel um, the implications of this are enormous. Because if you remember from scripture, Israel um, is Jacob. That is the nation of Israel. That is God's chosen people. And they were absolutely attacked yesterday. And the most horrific and horrendous things are happening to civilians and women and children. And they are, they, they're in a state of war. And they are on the brink of retaliation. So um, we need to keep Israel close in prayer. We need to think about what the implications may end up being for America, for our service members, uh, for our military. Um, and this stretches so far beyond. We don't know the future. 
but we know that God is in this, and we know what God says in Scripture. Whoever blesses you, I will bless. Whoever curses you, I will curse. So God is very aware of what is happening in Israel. So we need to make sure that as a church, this is something that we keep in the forefront of prayer constantly because we don't know we don't know what's coming next. Okay, so let's take a minute and let's close in prayer and we'll take some time to pray for Israel as well. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you so much, Lord, for the truth of Scripture, Lord, because in this ever-changing world, in this place that just seems so in, unstable at times and there's just so much chaos and confusion, Lord, you are our firm foundation. You are what we build our life on. You are unchanging. You are sovereign. You are God. You are powerful, Lord, and we can take heart in that. So, Lord, we just thank you for kind of what we're getting ready to dig into as a church, Lord, but just so much more on a global scale, Lord. What's happening in Israel is there's no words. So, Lord Jesus, we want to pray for the people of Israel who are completely under attack right now, for the families who have been devastated by, by just terroristic loss and carnage that's happening over there, Lord Jesus. But we know these are your people, and we know that you are fully aware of what's happening to your people. So, God, we just want to lift up um, that entire situation to you. God, we do not want war. We want peace. But, Lord, we know that that comes about in certain ways. So, Lord, even in, the, in a case like this where we're not even sure what to pray, Lord, we just want you to know that we as Velocity Church, our heart is with the people of Israel, Lord, and um, we're just going to continue to lift them up in prayer, Lord Jesus, until, until there's a resolution that comes about. So, God, we just want you to know how much we love you, how thankful we are for you being our firm foundation. We love you, and we pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.